okay so we have been looking at this work from yale university and it, in fact this is some of their most well known work which is on scripts essentially and the idea of a script is that it's a frame like structure which captures stereotypical knowledge about a situation and we are trying to look at how this program sam which is called script applier mechanism works and towards the end of the last class we saw this slide which says that an active script is defined by a set of things one of them is a list of patterns which predicts what input will be seen next in the story then what are the roles and what are the people in the story who conform to those roles which part of the script is currently being spoken about in the story uh, and is there anything in the story which is kind of looks like which is not part of the script which interferes with the script and how strongly we believe in the script and that kind of a thing so this is basically the activity that you can see in this uh, understanding stories using scripts which basically goes from left to right so there is a there is a program called pattern pattern match controller which uh, essentially sets the context essentially which means it tries to figure out what's happening in the script so it has to match the backbone of the script and it has to do role fit and role merge has to identify as to the people being spoken about in the story what roles they are playing in the script and so on then it has to do the match essentially then it may need to make some inferences for example the degree of hurt uh, whether it was slight or more or things like that and essentially once once this part which is the left part which is the pattern match controller has done its job then the applier calls something called a predictor which basically updates what's happening in its memory so some some of the stories that it has already some of the episode that it has dealt with and analyzed it it clears from its memory and it may load some new expectations which you expect to hear and things like that at the same time it also generates then explicit representation of the story essentially that as i have been saying is very important an explicit and detailed representation which will be used to answer questions or generate summaries and things like that actually so i want to look at a uh, another story and and this time look at the actual trace from this program sam which was written in 1974 or something it's a three line story let's first read the story and then we will see how sam uh, processes it so remember there is the english language phase then there is a picture pp memory phase then the script applier and then if necessary the language generator part essentially so the story is about these two people from albania uh enver hoxha and mrs hoxha who arrive in peking as it used to be called then at the invitation of the communist china essentially the albanian party was welcomed at the peking airport by the foreign minister huang then chairman hu hua and hoxha discuss economic relations between china and albania for 3 hours this is a story and we so the the idea of story understanding was that if you read this if you give this as an input to a program how much can the program answer about what it has understood the story essentially and this is what sam is demonstrating essentially so it starts with the script applier in control so the program is called apply and you look at this this is 12 july 1976 and this is basically the trace of the program so at the moment when this program was invoked it had got three scripts in its memory one was the train wreck script one was the vip visit script and one was the vehicle accident script so we have seen an example of the vehicle accident script so now we are going to see an example of this vip visit script because these are these premiers of the institute coming and we'll see how sam does it essentially so this trace was given in one of their books essentially which i have taken from there so first of course you have to call the parser uh and we will see that the vip script has components for traveling and it may have other things like parades and banquets and so on so you start reading the first line and which is given to the parser the first line says sunday morning and mr hoxha and premier the premier of albania and mrs hoxha arrived at the listing okay so notice that what it is creating is a conceptual dependency representation 
that there is some actor and this TMP32 is basically a token some some randomly generated token name. So, TMP32 P trans object TMP32 to the inside part of a polytype uh, which is a municipality whose name is speaking essentially. So, some amount of name entity recognition is started it is not stated from where to where and uh, uh, something is known about time that it was on the morning of a Sunday and so on and so forth. It is explicit here that they came as a invitation of communist China and so Passer has some idea that somehow China is involved in this invitation and it will use this to decide that it is the VIP visit script which is going to be activated. And then it essentially identifies who are these actors who came to China which is this token which it used was temp 32 and it basically fills in the details that there is a person gender female last name Hoxha and person gender masculine first name Enver last name Hoxha and the title premier and they come from this polity type nation whose name is Albania. And then PP memory which is their name for talk I mean talk which is their name for PP memory takes over and it creates tokens for each of them essentially. So, it is so it creates its own token. So, instead of uh, calling it temp 32 this calls it group 0 essentially. So, group has a has two members and it is called group 0. So, you this the details are not really important for us I just wanted to get a feel of what is the kind of processing that is happening here essentially. Hmm. So, so, basically the PP memory is analyzing that there is a human we are talking about whose whose gender is so and so whose first name is so and so it's not shown here because they are shown as uh, uh, tokens here. So, gender ten, temp 11 uh, first name temp 12 and so on and so forth. But Essentially, this is a kind of processing it is trying to do it is trying to identify what the people are essentially. So, the parser only parses the sentence and creates some tokens the PP memory tries to sort of identify tokens with what is happening essentially. So, it identifies uh, that Albania is a country and China is a country and the countries have premiers and things like that essentially. And it does some amount of role merging which says that Hume 1 is Hume 100 and so on. So, the parser did not know where Hoxas came from PP memory also has no idea where they came from. And then they try to look for a script which will be applicable. So, now they pass the control to this program called apply. Apply had called parser, parser had called PP memory which they call as talk and now we are back to the apply program with this structure which has been created which whose name is mem0. So, apply starts looking for scripts essentially and we will see today as to what are the kind of patterns that identify scripts. So, it first searches for train wreck and it finds that it that is not the case then it searches for VIP visit and it says that I have located my pattern to fit somewhere in the VIP visit. And so, it, it sort of binds uh, make some of the binding essentially that there is a nation which is inviting and so, it is a VIP visit and it sets the parser word senses for VIP visit. So, henceforth everything it reads it will treat it as trying to understand what is happening in a VIP visit script essentially. Okay, so, some details which we do not necessarily have to discuss here. So, it is recognized that that some people some group has P trans themselves to the inside part of some some organization or some something which is the airport and that they have arrived essentially. Then it reads the second line that the Albanian party was welcomed at Peking airport by 
foreign minister Huang. And then it basically says that now I am looking at a VIP welcome scene which is part of a VIP visit script and there is a welcomer who is a foreign minister whose last name is Huang and there is a welcomee which we have already spoken about which is temp 55 and then the time and, and something is given and that the group which is being welcomed has come from Albania and uh, this whole thing is happening in the, in the location which is in the proximity of this location type which is an airport in Peking essentially. So, once it knows that, that they are at the airport it can figure out that they came there in a flight essentially and that is one of the things which they were expecting to hear because VIPs have to somehow any visit has to be somehow facilitated by some organization essentially. So, this transport organization is an airline. So, that it has done some kind of role fitting here. And then there is a welcome event which is part of a script essentially. And, uh, the script will have these different scenes. So, remember that when we are talking about the visit, for example, a visit to a professional had the scene of making an appointment, uh, waiting in the waiting room consulting and then payment. Likewise, the VIP visit will have you know arrival, reception, discussions, banquet, parades, whatever essentially. And then the last line of the story which is that they discussed some economic uh, relations between the, this thing which it is uh, representing as saying that there was some M trans even which was happening. The object of that M trans which is M object were some concepts regarding contracts of a type economy and the discussion was between this group whose members were from Albania and from China. And then the instrumental act was the act of speaking uh, from the CP part. So, remember the conscious processor part of one to the conscious process part of the one. So, 171 is a group remember. So, they are talking amongst themselves and they are speaking that is all it is represented here essentially. And the people who are doing this speaking are the group whose members are uh, Enver Hoxha and, and chairman who are essentially. So, after having heard this it, it created some sort of a representation and it is essentially going to create a full representation of the story essentially which the details of course, we cannot follow here because we are we do not know what this token stand for, but there is an invitation then there is a group discussion and things like that. Probably. So, uh, it makes a story segment for the sub scene in which the uh, VIPs arrive then they are welcomed and then there is some talking and that is all that is known about the story essentially. And then there is some event graph that it, con that it constructs which says that this events happen, then these events happen, and so on and so forth. So, it is created some sort of an internal representation which, in which is explicit. So, this is the thing that I am trying to emphasize all this while essentially. Now, it having created the representation, it can tell you what, what happened essentially. So, if you call the English paraphrase mode, it will tell you this paraphrase that Premier Hoxha, the Albanian government head, and Chairman Hua. The China government had discussed Albania communist China economic affairs in Peking in China in two days ago. And this this program is called English which is a generator and they likewise have a generator in Spanish and so here is a story which you will have to accept is in Spanish unless you know Spanish in which case you could question it. Okay. So, again the whole idea is to, to separate the language dependent part with the language independent part only the communication should be language dependent. So, you can plug in the English generator or you can plug in the Spanish generator and the same story can be retold in that particular target language. Okay, so, now let us look at Wendy Leonard's work which is answering the question. So, if we have this question who went to China first you have to of course, give it to the parser you have to first make sense of the English language that is happening here which is done 
here by constructing a conceptual dependency version of this sentence which is who went to China which means actor temp 8 P trans object temp 8 to proximity part China so on and so forth some more and some time. The only question is we do not know what this token temp 8 should bind to and therefore, this question is understood as now we know having discussed uh, logic is it is like an existential query. Essentially. So, we are asking there exists a actor x or there exists some variable x who went to China essentially what is that x essentially. So, you can see that essentially now it has a storage representation all it needs to do is to find where this pattern which is the query matches the uh, matches the story representation there is no inference involved it is only matching left. So, it has to basically take this pattern and, and match it in the story and that will generate the answer. So, it is searching in that representation that it has created it finds that this this matches this and then it basically generates the answer which is group 0 which it gives to English and the English basically converts it into saying that it is premier Hoxha and Mrs. Hoxha. The story of course, does not talk of anyone going to China it says they arrived in China essentially, but these are small things which Sam can get over by now. So, here is another question. So, how did they get to China? So, this question has to be recognized as saying that there is an instrumental act that we are trying to figure out what it is. So, the representation created by the question understanding system is that there is somebody who went to China and we do not know where and we do not know what the instrumental act is essentially. So, the pattern that is now to be matched it basically says that there is this actor group 101 which p trans object group 101 to proximity part of polit 102, but the, the missing variable is the instrumental act essentially. Hmm. So, now you sort of match your story representation and then you can find that this pattern matches a place where it says that there was an organization called org 0 which p trans this group to, to China uh, which is the airline which took them to China and which in this particular instance the answer generated says that they flew to China. I mean they could have jolly well said that the airline brought them to China or so on, but we have seen that even when we are looking at Margie that the same sentence can be you know said in different ways essentially. So, one last question. why did they go to China. So, remember this causal relations we talked about in concept conceptual dependency those so, they are saying that there is there is something which led to led to is one of the causal connections uh, led to this whole event of them going to China. So, what is that conceptualization which leads to this they are going to China. So, again the it generates a pattern as you can see at the bottom of the of the slides that there is some conceptualization which we do not know which leads to this new second conceptualization which is that they went to China essentially. So, again if the story has it it will be able to answer it in this example which is given in the book. So, of, of course, they will only give successful examples in the book it says that because they had a goal of m trancing some things between themselves essentially. They wanted to discuss China Albania economic affairs. So, so this is how Sam works essentially. So, it reads the story it invokes the scripts it fills in the missing parts and says that this is what happens and based on that representation it answers certain questions essentially. So, let us just have a quick look again at this Sam. So, this is a script that we had seen earlier which is uh, the subway script where you go to a subway you may buy a ticket go to the platform and wait and so on and so forth. So, there are all these different 
characters which are part of this, this script and they can be identified as roles. So, for example, the subway group script has the following roles there is a patron group. Uh, so, it can be a person or a group of people who are going there can be a cashier, there can be a conductor, there can be a driver and there is the organization which is a for example, the metro or the MRTS or something like that. Each candidate for a role must match a semantic category. So, just as we saw in LE semantic matching is a key to this whole thing and then the, the riders, the cashier and the conductor must be human unless of course, we have this Google car like thing which comes in now. So, and the organization must be an organization. Then they have props. So, so scripts have roles and props. So, in a subway script we have tokens, we have fares, we have a turnstile, we have a platform seat, we have a subway, subway car, car seat, strap, exit gate all these kind of things must be part of us. You can expect to hear about them in a subway script essentially. And there are events which happen. So, for example, the group of travelers which is called the patron group here, the pat group, they you can one of the events that will happen is that they will give money to the cashier. So, they will a trans object which is and fair to the to the cashier. So, you can expect to hear in this. So, this will what, what will happen in a script essentially. Then a typical person in the picture producer memory is a frame structure that we have been talking about in the last couple of classes. So, Hume 0 is a name of a person who is of type person which we could have said is a person whose title is doctor, whose occupation is MD, his first name is Marcus, his surname is Welby, his age is 53, his gender is masculine, his re residence is location 0 which is another frame which is of type local which is street number 45 street name Orchard street and the polity is Paul 0 which is another frame which is the municipality whose name is New York essentially. So, you can see that these frames are all over the place here. Then we have to do semantic matching that the patron group can match a person or a group. So, it and it must not have any other function in the script that the, the customers in this case or the, the patrons are distinct from the people who are playing other roles in the script essentially. So, this one says that they have no other function the S function none says that if you are a customer you are a customer you cannot be the driver at the same time for example. And then you have a pattern like pattern enters the station which is represented by this conceptual dependency structure actor pattern group P trans object pattern group to inside part of station. And this will match or this should match any of these uh, sentences. The John and Mary went into a subway station, it should match this sentence or John walked into a subway station. So, it could be John or it could be John and Mary, but it does not matter. John strolled out of the restaurants up the street and into the subway station. So, that out of the restaurant is ignored here, but it should still match that and or John went to the BMT essentially. So, scripts have headers and these are the headers which are used to recognize that this script is active. Now, you cannot imagine searching the entire script for finding a match essentially because that would be a computationally a hard problem. So, what they did was they had these headers which were used to identify as to which script can be active essentially. So, for example, there is a direct header which is described here that a subway script is active. So, if there was a sentence like John took a subway to Coney Island, then you would match with this header and you would say okay, the subway script is active. Remember that we are talking about retrieving scripts from your memory and making them active and then you know looking at scenes in that and loading certain episodes and all that kind of stuff. Or there could be a local header which says that uh, the patent group as we saw very in the last slide, they moved to the inside part of the station. So, John walked into the Bolo Hall subway station or John and Mary went into the subway station all this would match a local header and would be an indicator for saying that the subway script is the one that is to be used essentially. Or it could be an instrument header which says that this organization took this person to a certain place. So, the IRT took John to the Shia stadium essentially. 
so so he was he wanted to let's say go and watch this match or something so he went to the stadium and how did he go from irt so once you know that he took the irt we know that the subway script must have happened even though there is nothing much which is spoken about here and then there is a precondition header which says that uh, for example if he john wanted to go downtown then you know that one of the ve- reasons one of the ways that he can go downtown is by taking a subway script essentially so here we are talking about a goal which is part of so the last line says that the actor uh pat group the conceptualization that the actor pat group wanted to p trans object pat group to inside part of station and that's a goal of pat group is it so well actually there's a small error here it should have been not part of station it should have been part of the city or something but anyway he wanted to go to the uh, city center or downtown and that could invoke the script that we have essentially so in the next class i will talk a little bit about goals and plans and things like that and we will see how programs can explicitly reason about goals here we are not reasoning about goals we are simply saying that if you have a goal of going somewhere then maybe the subway script will be active essentially so we'll stop here with scripts so essentially what scripts did was that they produce these large patterns which have all these variables inside them which are roles and props and things like that which describe typical activity in a given situation essentially in the next class we will see that if a certain person has certain goals then what kind of plans they can use essentially so the relations between goals and plans and actions we will see again this work is also from the group at yale university uh, but it looks at a different kind of knowledge structures essentially so we'll do that in the next class i'll stop here okay.